Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, December 18th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the House approves a $1 trillion spending bill. Then, Bernie Sanders and the drama of the DNC. And Obama continues to state there is no credible threat to the U.S. That's next. You realize what degenerate, cultural oxymorons these people are? These are power grabbers. These are people who just want to lecture us all day and tell us how to live and, and, and guilt us. Well, I'm not guilty, you fascist, evil, slug, Obama. Your family out of Kenya funding and literally running jihad operations all over the Middle East and Africa. I'll give Obama this, he's bold. I could never have imagined an Islamic radical sleeper cell becoming president. I mean, I can't believe the CIA did this. I can't believe Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell, it removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Well, earlier this week, we told you about a billion, no, trillion dollar spending bill and tax break bill that was set to pass through the House with flying colors. And lo and behold, that has happened today. The House approved a $1.1 trillion spending bill. It had a majority Democrat vote. And this is despite the fact that the Republicans are the majority in both the House and the Senate. Now, their conservatives said that this omnibus bill frustrated them. They said the bill failed to address many of the Obama's controversial initiatives and ceded a lot of power to Democratic demands. But nevertheless, they went ahead and signed it anyway. So this is just further evidence of the fact that this is a total failure. Um, on behalf of the American people, we made our intentions clear with giving them the majority in both the House and the Senate. And once again, just like they ceded control to the Democrats for the entire fiscal year of 2015, that's going to now continue on into probably 2017. So there you go. They're kind of sleeping on the job. And oh, yeah, by the way, they passed this right before their Christmas break. So there are your uh, public servants, your elected representatives. And of course, just like Obama came out yesterday sort of gloating about the fact that these two bills were um, putting the ball in their court, so to speak, Harry Reid comes out gloating as well. Um, he said it's been a very successful year for the Democrats, and he's gloating there on the House floor. He said months ago, Democrats called on Republicans to work with us to craft a budget agreement. We wanted to get rid of sequestration. We were able to do that. All three goals we had, we accomplished. So he's just basically sitting out there t saying how amazing they are and saying how this legislation caps off a successful year for Senate Democrats. So it clearly has not been a successful year for Republicans, other than the fact that they got the majority of the votes of the American people that they promptly threw away. So this is just further proof of the whole left-right paradigm. All it is is to paralyze voters. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, they're working together to go ahead and cede their power to the one master. Now, something else that happened, the Fed finally raised interest rates. This is actually America's first interest rate hike in nearly a decade. And of course, this was expected to happen. Uh, they raised key interest rates from a range of 0% to 0.25% to 
the range of 0.25% to 0.5%. So it's a very small rate hike, but it's gonna affect millions of Americans uh, especially those who are investors or home buyers and savers, you know, of course, you're going to see a teeny tiny little bit of increase there, uh, interest in your deposits at the bank. But they're saying that this is a this move is a good indicator of how the economy has turned around and healed since the Great Recession. And Obama was actually quite confident of this fact as well. He mentioned this as one of his achievements uh, today in his final speech of the year. Now we had economist Peter Schiff on the show and you know, he was singing a different tune. The Fed was talking about the fact that it was gonna raise rates later in the year, that they thought the economy would be strong enough so that it would be appropriate to raise rates before year end. And of course, the analysts were expecting the rate hikes to come a lot sooner. They were, people thought they would have done it at least two or three times by now. But the Fed kept passing and kept talking about how they were data dependent. All of a sudden, they got to December. There's two weeks left of the year. Rates are still at zero. And I think they thought that if they didn't raise them now, they would lose their credibility. It would prove that the economy was too weak to withstand a rate hike. So I think to try to create a false sense of confidence and to try to save some of their credibility, they raised interest rates by a token amount in a symbolic gesture to try to save face and create confidence. And you know what, it's backfiring on them as I thought, you know, the market is down substantially. We're down, Dow's down what, about 250 points as we speak. It was down almost 300. It dropped 250 points yesterday, but the real carnage is going on beneath the scenes. Uh, look at what's happening in the high yield bond market. Look what's happening in some of these leverage funds. Uh, we're seeing all sorts of uh, things blowing up. It looks very much uh, like the way the markets were looking in the months leading up to the 2008 financial crisis. Well, today we learned that an audit showed that Bernie Sanders' campaign was repeatedly accessing sensitive voter information that belonged to Hillary Clinton's campaign. Now, it was this breach of sensitive voter information that led Sanders to fire his national data director. And now the DNC is clearly taking a very heavy-handed response to that. Um, they are basically blocking Bernie Sanders' entire campaign from being able to access their own information. So they can't even get in there and access the information that they've collected on their voters with their large grassroots effort. And now Bernie Sanders is threatening to sue the DNC. And his top aide, Jeff Weaver, said they are not going to sabotage our campaign. They're, they've suspended their access to the National Voter Database. And this is actually right before uh, voting is set to take place in Iowa and New Hampshire. So this could be a huge blow to Bernie Sanders' campaign. Now, even though the campaign admitted its staffers had inappropriately reviewed and saved Clinton's campaign data, uh, it was made available via a software error. Um, but they're em emphatically accusing the DNC of sabotage and of blatantly favoring Hillary Clinton. And of course they are. They are all in for Clinton. So hopefully what's going on with this election season will help to expose the con game that is the election process. Now, obviously, on the Republican side, we had uh, Ben Carson and Donald Trump calling out, uh, calling out the Republican team for exposing these backdoor deals that they're going to get Jeb in no matter what with the whole delegate system. So on one side, voters were able to be exposed to that side of the election process. But now here we can see how the DNC can undermine Bernie Sanders campaign um, by not allowing them to access these. And they've never done anything like this before. Uh, this is very heavy handed move that they make that could potentially sabotage Bernie Sanders campaign. And of course, in Iowa and New Hampshire, he's very close to Hillary Clinton there. Um, but also, you can look and see how the DNC has swung the debate schedule itself. That right there is a blatant expose of how they are all in for Clinton. And Martin O'Malley and Bernie Sanders have both been coming out recently uh, in weeks saying why are you holding debates on the weekends? So they've had two debates. This one coming up will be the second debate on a Saturday. There's another one being held on a Sunday. Of course, there's going to be some big time football games going on at the same time. So no one's going to be watching. And of course, that's going to swing the votes in favor of Hillary because she could win potentially on her last name alone. So they don't want to have 
O'Malley or Bernie Sanders getting any airtime. So of course, you know, this is quite sneaky little tactics that are being exposed in this election season, which is pretty comforting to know, actually. Now, Obama has come out yesterday reassuring Americans there is no credible threat of terror. Even so, he wants us all to remain vigilant. He says he's got his teams working overtime 24 hours a day. Now, this is at the same time, of course, he's saying that his security experts are constantly hard at work. They're putting up safeguards to prevent terrorists from entering the country. But this is at the same time that they just passed that $1.1 trillion omnibus bill that allows an additional 300,000 refugees to enter the country with a failed vetting system. As they could say, those federal background checks do not work. And check this out, the Obama administration has no idea where thousands of potential terrorists are. They do not know the whereabouts of, of thousands of people. There were more than 100,000, in fact, that have had their visas revoked since 2001 over terror concerns and for other reasons. Now, this is according to a State Department official, and they said they have no clue where about where more than 100,000 of these people are. So they revoke their visas, they're roaming around the United States, and they had their visas revoked due to terrorism concerns, and they have absolutely no idea where they are. Now, of course, this admission comes as members of this committee were pressing the administration um, on what safeguards are in place to reduce the risk from would-be extremists. And so then it comes out that yeah, well, lo and behold, we have no idea where these people are. So, I mean, just a total failure. And the U.S. government, of course, they're trying to explain how they examine uh, the backgrounds of people who are seeking entry to the country. But while they're doing all of this, they're passing the omnibus bill that is allowing hundreds of thousands of people who will not be vetted properly into the country. So it's just a huge cluster there. Now, here is one win. This is a win for people who are fighting back against mandatory vaccinations. This is in Indiana. Uh, parents were able to stop the state's unethical HPV vaccine push. Now, this is a Jeffrey Jackson article. He reports that it took exactly one month to the day for an activated Indiana population to turn back efforts by their state's health department to coerce and pressure parents into having this potentially dangerous HPV vaccine. Now, we reported on this, I interviewed him, it was because uh, parents were alerted to this because their children were put on this vaccine tracker list that the parents never consented to. They were very upset about this, breach of privacy there. And so, of course, they flooded uh, those offices, made phone calls protesting the intrusion by the state's government. And eventually the state officials caved and they were forced to comply with these parents who were extremely concerned. You have to remember, vaccines are a corporate product, okay? And the fact that they make them mandatory is quite scary, especially considering that HPV, the vaccine, it only treats certain strains of it. It makes you three times more susceptible to other strains of HPV. HPV is known to go away on its own with a healthy immune system and with regular checkups at your doctor. So the fact that it's mandatory is quite frightening, but take a look at this. The author of a mandatory meningitis vaccine bill that was going on in New York State was busted having his hand in the pot, so to speak. He has investments in pharmaceutical and health companies to at least $100,000, and it's being alleged he has received more than 400,000 from the same interest group. So there you go, he makes it mandatory for your children to get a vaccine that he knows he's gonna get a cut of. And that's the new world order for you folks. Newsweek, an 82-year-old magazine that has changed hands over the years and is now barely scratching at a profit, has, like many desperate publications in print media, become a regurgitation of elitist propaganda. So it comes as no surprise that Newsweek would produce an article of arrogant swill such as this. Star Wars Class Wars. Is Mars the escape hatch for the 1%? By Kevin Maney. Maney states, for all of our simple little shrunken minds that while many dream of escaping Earth to settle on Mars, billionaires like Elon Musk and 